welcome to Thrive in Design, a podcast about making money in beautiful interiors as it relates to product-based businesses in the interior design industry. Each week, we'll discuss innovative strategies on how to approach product development and design sales in a shifting market. I'm your host, Nicole lachey Ben. All right, we are in another episode of the Thrive in Design podcast. Welcome back. If you are an avid listener, if this is your first time here, then welcome to the show. My name is Nicola Shea Ben, and I am the CEO of Thrive in Design. Thrive in Design is more than just a podcast. It's also a design and innovation consultancy that focuses on helping interior product companies increase their brand awareness and revenue. So the last few episodes of this season has really been themed on social selling. And I was really led to focus on social selling because it's really a part of a customer journey or designer's journey with an interior product company. And if you are not familiar, I am obsessed with customer journeys. I'm obsessed with diving deeper into customer journeys, with identifying pain points of a customer journey, and really being innovative in how we approach solving those pain points coming up with solutions for those pain points through products, through services, through strategies on how we put products to market. So that has been the theme of this season. But today I want to actually focus on a couple of things. I want to get vulnerable for a moment. And I also want to tell you about what's going on at Thrive and Design. So over the last few weeks, there's been a transition, I would say, in my business in my endeavors that really caused me to be shaken up a little bit, I would say. So I had a, how should I phrase this? I'm going to say an opportunity that I was a part of for a little over a year. And I learned a lot from that opportunity. I got to work with a lot of different amazing people, but there was also, you know, bad that came along with that opportunity, right? There was people or a person, I should say, that really did not want to see me win and took every opportunity upon themselves to try to like make me out to be a bad person, to make me out to be like I was not good enough or didn't deserve to be in the room. And in the theme of last week's episode where we closed out Black History Month and really talked about diversity, equity, inclusion. I shared my experience as a Black woman in the interior design industry alongside my friend Tamara, who shared her experience as a Black woman in interior design. I just want to say that, like, I have really been struggling with showing up, showing up fully, and being confident in the fact that I am called to do what I'm doing. I'm the only person doing what I'm doing, and I have really God given gifts to do the things that I'm doing at Thrive and Design through this podcast, through the work that I'm doing, through the people I'm connecting with, through the people that I'm serving. So I'm pushing through all of that, all of the naysayers, all of the people who try to, you know, bring me down (laughs) and pushing forward. And I know that seems vague, but I just felt led to really share that in this moment because being a minority in this country, in this industry is sometimes hard. Sometimes I question Hey, am I doing the right thing? Hey, do I have the right credentials? Hey, do people need what I have? And even though the majority of people that I come across validate that, sometimes the one or two people that come strong to tear me down or tear my business down or tear opportunities down for me can be a little bit overwhelming. But I say all that to say that I'm still pressing forward and I'm so excited for all the things that are to come with Thrive and Design. So since I had an encounter that was not so great a couple of weeks ago, it has turned around for good. So what am I working on in Thrive and Design? This week, I'm actually publishing a new service guide for Thrive and Design. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, Thrive and Design is more than just a podcast. It's a design and innovation consultancy. So what does that mean exactly? So I've been obsessed with design thinking for probably my whole life without even knowing it. And design thinking is really the process of design and fusing that process into business strategy, sales strategy, and innovation, right? So if you were to think about interior design specifically, and you are designing a space for a client, 
you would start to think about, okay, who is this client? What are their needs? What are their pain points? Right. How can I employ research methods to develop a deeper understanding for that client? So then I can create a space that is a solution for them. Right. So say, for instance, it's a workplace and they have a certain number of people in their office. They have certain departments in their office. Some of those departments need to be close to each other in order to collaborate. You know, they have a certain mood and feel that they want to to go for. They have a certain culture that they want to emulate in their brand, right? So in the design process, it's really all about understanding that so that you can develop a space that caters to that client. But when you take that same process and apply it to business or sales strategy, it's really the same thing, the same principles in understanding the client, their pain points, their needs, how they need to work together, what needs to be improved upon, and then designing a solution for that. So that's basically what I do with Thrive and Design. My clientele is interior product companies, right? I've worked for interior product companies over the last decade. And in working for them, I noticed pretty much the same thing at every company. Every company has an interior product that they are trying to bring to market. So especially in commercial, it's heavily relied on relationship-based. It's heavily relied on sampling materials so that designers can see the tactile material and understand the technical aspects and how they're integrating it to their products. It's really understanding how that product can go from being manufactured to being shipped to being installed or even purchased by a GC or a subcontractor and then installed in a space, right? But that whole journey often has pain points. And trust me, I have experienced all of those pain points working on the sales side. I'm like, okay, I don't have enough marketing materials. I don't have enough sales tools. I don't have the proper coaching or training to really go out there to get in front of designers or When it gets to that end execution stage, I don't have the internal support to actually get that sale out the door, right? So those are the pain points that I'm so deeply ingrained in and that I'm really passionate about solving for interior product companies. So I'm super excited about partnering with new clients this year, getting out there, doing the work, (laughs) solving all the pain points, improving customer journeys. And I also realized that a part of that customer journey that has come up for a lot of interior product companies has been social selling. And that's why I have been focusing on social selling in this podcast this season. So I know this is not a traditional episode where I typically do research on things. I talk about a topic. I give you guys pointers. But today I really just wanted to reintroduce myself, right, and tell you guys what, how I can serve you. So if you have not listened to the first season of the podcast in understood my proprietary method of ACE the Journey, I encourage you to go back to first season and really dive deeper into ACE the Journey, but just a snippet of what that is. So as I just mentioned, customer journeys are something that I'm super obsessed with, something that I'm super ingrained in, in what I'm doing over at Thrive and Design. But my proprietary method at Thrive and Design is ACE the Journey, right? And the story behind that is one, It's about customer journey. So we really need to understand how are we going to perfect the customer journey and what I like to say, ace the journey to be design-centered, to be human-centered. And in acing the journey, it's really tied into like acing a test, right? So if you think back to school, you wanted to do the best on the test. You wanted to ace that test. And for me, ACE has become an acronym for three things. A, being appearing, C, being consulting, and E, being executing. So it really breaks down different research questions that we can dive into as we break apart your customer journey. A, being appearing, how is your company appearing in the market? C, consulting, how is your company consulting designers? And E, how is your company executing the sale in order to bring that specification to life? So at Driver Design, when you partner with me, we really dive into those specific research questions from a design thinking, human-centered perspective to understand what is your customer journey, right? So this is how we can work together. So say you're like, okay, Nicole, this all sounds interesting. You've been listening to the podcast and you're like, okay, I want to take it a step further and understand how 
I can work with you being me <laughs> or how you can work with Thrive and Design. These are the ways that you can work with me. So this year, I have four different core service offerings. Those four core service offerings are customer journey, audit, and strategic planning. The second is leveraging social selling and interior design. The third is speaking engagements. And the fourth is podcast sponsorships. So the first thing, customer journey, audits, and strategic planning. So that's going to be a deep dive into Ace the Journey, which I briefly mentioned a moment ago. And I'm going to take a pause right there because this came up because working in sales for different interior product companies, leadership always used to tell me, continue doing what you're doing or keep doing what you're doing, Nicole. And it took me a while to really understand like, okay, what is it that I'm doing that is actually leading to success? And what is it that is not leading me to success? What do I need to do that is going along with current trends? And what do I need to do that is innovative and takes into account any market disruption, right? So leaders were telling me, continue doing what I was doing, but really it took me diving deeper into those questions that I just mentioned. And because I'm a problem solver, because I, you know, went to school for interior design and then grad school for design management, I really think like that, right? So over the course of my career, I've understood a deeper dive into what is it going to look like to audit this customer journey and really keep doing what I'm doing to actually be successful and then replicate that. So when you work with me on a customer journey audit and strategic planning, we really go through six stages. The first is vision setting. So we start by building an understanding of our process together, getting to know like what are the internal teams within your company that need to get on board for collaboration. Then we go into a training and we do an introduction to design thinking, customer journey mapping, and how ACE the journey can actually be used for your company. From there, we go into context building, right? So that is really employing research methods within your company to really gain an understanding for internal and external factors that influence the current state of your company and the current state of your customer journey. So after we build out that context, we understand everything that is a part of your customer journey. We understand all of those pain points. Then we can go into strategic planning where I'll present insights and opportunities for improvement and growth. From there, we'll go on to a pathway forward. So I might present implementation and next steps for your company. And if you're like, okay, Nicole, I love these next steps. I love this plan. We could go one or two ways. I can give you recommendations on how you can outsource these things, or you can keep me on to do an immersive for ongoing support and coaching for your internal teams of how you can implement those strategies and systems. And that's what I prefer, the immersive. So that's the first core offering that we have over at Thrive and Design. And the next thing is leveraging social selling and in interior design. So as I mentioned a few moments ago, social selling has become a huge hot topic. And of course, the theme of this season of the podcast, which I'm super, super excited about. And it's really important because we are in this new normal, as people say. In a recent Think Lab study that I read and was a part of a webinar, mentioned that three out of four commercial design firms will actually continue moving forward with some type of hybrid work, right? So if you are not connecting with designers and architects through some type of social platform via your reps and building authentic connections with them, then you are missing out. So if you are struggling with social selling, if you're struggling with how to understand it, with how to grasp it, with how to train your sales team on best practices, then I have three ways that we can work together specifically with social selling. And this is just one part of your customer journey. So the first thing is training. So I have a new workshop that I'm super excited to launch called Social Specs, how Andy reps can leverage social selling to grow specs, right? So this is specifically designed to help your sales team kickstart into social selling. So if you have a regional meeting or a national meeting coming up and you're looking to have like a keynote on social selling, I have a new training that's about an hour, hour and a half ish that is meant to kickstart your team on social selling. Give them the basics of what that is. 
And then from there, if you wanted to do a customized series on further training, like how to use Instagram, how to use LinkedIn, all the technical aspects, all of those things, we can do a customized training series for your team. The second thing is coaching. So say I train you guys on this, but your team needs more support. I also offer one-on-one or group office hours. So say, for instance, we do a group office hours. We'll dedicate like one to two hours a week where your team can hop on a call with me on Zoom and ask any questions that they have regarding social selling, and I will coach them through it. And then the last thing is support and implementation, right? So I remember a few years ago when I was working for a specific interior product company, and they were like, okay, start social selling, right? But everybody was creating their own content. Everybody was creating their own graphics, and things were like looking a hot mess, for lack of better words right? And the last thing you want is for every single rep to look like they are representing a different brand. You want consistent content across all social platforms to make sure that they are on brand. And you don't want to make it so that the rep has a whole other job because social media management and social content creation can be two separate jobs, right? So with support implementation, I will basically use platforms to create customized social calendars and upload all of your content and graphics onto a platform that provides your reps and sales team with consistent, easily shareable content, right? That is aligned with your company goals, that helps them connect with designers online, that also helps share your brand image and your brand message easily across all platforms, across all of your reps, right? So that's important implementation. And this has been something that I have been passionate about for years and years and years. When I first started my business, it started out as Nicola Shea Consulting LLC before it was Thrive and Design. And I started with social selling, right? I started with doing virtual summits that have reached three countries around the world. 700 plus people around the world have attended my conferences. And I started by making connections with people through social media, right? And so I've honed in on these skills and applied it to the interior design industry in those three ways. So again, if you are looking to leverage social selling for design sales, then I can help you with training, coaching, support, and implementation. And so the next two core service offerings that I can help you with are one, speaking engagements. So if you have a conference, BDNY, IIDA, Light Fair, KBIS, All of the things, HD Vegas, New York Design Week, Milan Design Week, all the things that are coming up in this industry, and you are looking for somebody to host a talk, be on a panel, keynote, reach out to me. I'm looking forward to talking about an array of industry topics, about my experience in the industry, about being a minority in this industry, about what I hope to see in this industry, or just like be an MC and have some fun because I have some jokes that I got to tell. And then the last thing is podcast sponsorship. Obviously, you're listening to this podcast, but moving forward in season four of this podcast and beyond, I have opportunities for podcast sponsorships because this show is blowing up. It's streamed in eight countries and it's hitting records for downloads every single week. So I have some opportunities for podcast sponsorships for 30 second and 60 second commercials to talk about your interior product company. If you're a tech platform, if you're an interior design firm, architecture firm, I would love to hear from you. So those are the ways that you can work with me. And as I said, I'm coming out the gate strong this year. I'm super excited to move forward, super excited to be emboldened, super excited to be bold in what I'm doing in Drive and Design because I've never seen anything done before like what I feel like I am called to do. So. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Thanks in advance for partnering with me. And I look forward to working with you. So if you heard all of that and you're like, okay, Nicole, yes, let's work together. What do I need to do next? Really, you can go over to Instagram at Thrive and Design. Thanks for joining us this week on Thrive and Design. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Thrive and Design. And for more strategies on how your product company can innovate in the interior design industry, head to training.thriveanddesign.co. As always, subscribe to the show to catch every new episode. 
and leave us a review so we can continue to create captivating content. See you next week.